we're going to move on to 1.6. In 1.5, we did multiplication, so what's really the next thing we can do after multiplication? Division. We're going to do that. So we're going to work on some division here for a little while. And we're going to be dividing into whole numbers. Or, sorry, dividing whole numbers. No fractions yet. What is this homework? No, this is our next section. I'll give you homework at the very end. Really, when we say division, we don't really mean I'm going to take a certain number of items and put three of them here and five of them here and two of them here and six of them here. What we mean by dividing is taking a certain number of items and dividing them equally into groups. Are you with me on that? So we don't want different sized groups, we want the same group. So we are dividing equally into a certain number of groups. You know as a teacher I have a lot of books and I have, I think at home, I got rid of some. So I think I have about 24 books right now that are just on my shelf. And I have six shelves on my bookshelf. If I wanted to put them evenly, I have 24 books. I have six shelves. How many books are going to go on each shelf? Four. Yep, that's a division problem. We took my 24 books, we put them equally on six shelves. We got four books per shelf. Every shelf is going to have at least four books. Just like with addition and subtraction and multiplication, all these things have words, have names to them. Uh, this one right here, the thing you are dividing, the number you are dividing, that's called your dividend. What you're dividing by, that number is called the divisor. Can you say dividend with me? Dividend. Divisor? Divisor. Good. Okay, let's try this one out. Addition had a sum. Subtraction was a difference. Multiplication was a product. Division is a... Starts with a Q. Quotient. Yeah, you're right. And you know what, there's a few different ways that we can represent this problem. We could do just the standard 24 divided by 6, uh, but there are also some other options for us. Oftentimes you'll see it like this. You ever seen that before? That's it. Which number is going to go inside of our division symbol here? 44. First number goes inside, the divisor here is going to go on the outside, and our quotient would go on the top. One last one that we can't have, we can write this as a fraction. 24 <coughs> over 6 means 24 divided by 6. All three of these mean exactly the same thing. So when you see them, don't get intimidated just because there's a fraction here. All it means is take 24 divided by 6 and get 4 out of it. Let's try a few examples just so we get the hang of this, get our brains rolling on division. We'll do some properties, and I think that'll end our day today. Don't shout it out. I want people to think about this. So if you know the answer, great. Just hold it to yourself for a second. Firstly, can you name me my dividend? Name me my dividend. Good. Name me my divisor. Nine. And what is our quotient here? Eight. Perfect. Great job. Quotient goes on top. How about this one? What is my quotient in this division problem? Five. Perfect. What's my divisor? What's my divisor in this problem? Four. 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 Good. What's the answer going to be? Our quotient? Seven. Seven. So each of these mean division. We can identify the names of each part. 
and we can do these problems uh, as they are. Now there are some properties of division. One of these is honestly really important for you to get a handle on. I'll talk about it specifically for just a couple minutes. First thing <coughs> is this. If you divide a number by itself, any number by itself, what are you always going to get? One. One. Every time. You know what that goes to show you is also, since you said that, every time we see a fraction of a number over itself, what are we going to get? One. One. That's because, well, a whole. It is a whole. It's also a division problem. Four divided by four, that's a whole. What happens whenever we divide a number by one? What are we going to get? It sounds the same number. So whether it's four or any other number, if I divide it by one, I'm going to get that number back again. That's an identity. It's called an identity. By the way, is the reverse true? Can I divide one by four and get four? Mm -hmm. Does it flip around like addition and multiplication do? No. No, it's not commutative. Oh. This and this. are different things. This right here we're going to look at later. We're not there yet, uh, but we will get there. So what this says is that if you have 4 over 1, that's going to be 4. That's a way you can also write a whole number as a fraction every single time. We'll get into that later. Here's the big one. If, you, if you've been sleeping all day, hopefully you haven't been sleeping all day, but if you've been kind of zoning out, this is the part to zone in on, all right? You see, one of these is okay, and one of these things is not okay. One you can have in math, and it's great. The other one you can't have in math, and it's not okay. Here's how I'm going to explain it to you. I want you to think of this as if it's possible or if it's not possible. Think about, the, think about money. Let's say you had zero dollars. You have no money. And you spread it between four bank accounts. How much money is going to be in each of your bank accounts? Nine. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you have no money and you open four bank accounts, you're just going to have no dollars in those bank accounts. Are you, nod your head if you're with me on that. Okay. Now think about this one. You have four dollars and you put it in zero bank accounts. How much is in each bank account? No. Do you have a bank account? No. Then is the question of how much do you have in each bank account even relevant? No. no. Then this one doesn't make sense, does it? Right. This one you can think through, can't you? Yeah. I have zero bucks and four accounts. That's zero per account. I have four dollars and zero accounts. I can't ask the question how many is in each account because I don't even have an account. One of these things is reasonable. This answer is zero. This one, if you've heard it before, is called undefined because you can't do it. That implies two things about fractions for us in the future. It says that if we have zero divided by a number, zero, what's zero divided by a number then? Zero. zero. This one's just fine. If we have a number divided by zero, is this one okay? No. This one is undefined. It doesn't equal zero, it doesn't equal four, it doesn't equal anything, it's just undefined. How many people are clear on that? Raise your hand if you're clear on that. Good. Okay, so today we covered a little bit about area. We did some multiplication of large numbers. We got in on to, uh, to some division, and we're about halfway through division. Next time on Monday, we'll talk about how to divide long numbers, and then we'll wrap up that section. Did you guys understand what we talked about today? Yes. All right, good deal. So last time, we ended with a little bit of properties of division. We talked about when and when you cannot divide by, oh, if you can divide by zero or divide zero by a number, we found that out. Today we're going to start with long division. We'll refresh your memory on how to do that. Then we'll get on into a couple word problems, not too bad. And then we'll end our day with exponents and order of operations. So that's our plan. Let's get started on some long division. So we'll look at dividing large numbers.
So you know, I know we can divide things like my opening example, if I have 24 books and I'm putting them on six shelves, how many books are going to be on each shelf again? Four. Yeah, because we're just doing 24 divided by six. And maybe you can do something like 16 divided by two and you do that really quick in your head. But sometimes we have these large <coughs> problems that we can't quite do that. For instance, if we did 4,906 divided by, sorry, let's make that an eight. 4,908 divided by 6. Can you do that in your head? Maybe. Maybe if you, really, if you think about it. You just set it up and do it in your head, but it take you a long time. You, know, you might make some mistakes. So, possibly. There's a better way that we can do this. In fact, we found three ways that we can represent division. We had this way. We had this way. Do you remember that way? The fraction root still means division. But the last way we had was this way. Which number went inside for this, this way? Four. 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 Perfect. And we had the six over there. And this set up a method for us to actually divide these, these numbers. What's the way you do that, though? What do we do here? Three times six first or second. Sure, yeah, you're exactly right. We would try the first number, right? We'd say, <coughs> how many times does 6 go into 4? Well, you know what? It doesn't. So we're going to have to say not 4, but maybe 6 goes into 49. And we're talking about how many times it goes in without going over. Great. Who said that? Good job on whoever said it. <coughs> so we have 8. So we check how many times 6 goes into 49. We got our 8. What do you do with the 8? <coughs> Okay. So the 6 times 8, we get the 48. Perfect. We're going to put it right under the 49. And then what? So just subtract. Yeah. And this is one way you can check your work. The number that you get after subtraction should be less than that number. That's how you know you get it right. If it's more than that number, you didn't pick this one big enough. For right now, we're just divided by 6, so it's not that big of a deal. But when you're divided by other numbers, that helps you out. Okay, so we have this one. What's the next thing we do? Zero. Good, very good. And six goes into that number how many times? Cool. We continue this process called the division algorithm. Algorithm just means the steps you go to get somewhere. So here we follow the steps. Now the one gets multiplied by six. We continue to subtract. We bring down that eight. And six goes into 48 how many times? We multiply. We get the 48, we subtract, and we get either a remainder, which we haven't had yet, or we get zero telling us it went in evenly. So this answer, this quotient, is going to be 818. We'll feel all right with the division so far. All right, let's try a couple more and we'll move on. Okay, let's try this. 7 into 2,128. The first thing we check is 7 into which number, folks? 21. And how many times? Three. We multiply, we get 21. We subtract, wait a second, we get 0. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. This is actually a really important example for you to see. Pay attention right now. Even if you think, man, I got division down.